Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL series episode 67. This is part four in the picking parts. And we're going to be looking at picking sides of a face on a cube. So jumping right in here, we'll scroll to the very top. Um, we've added a few things in in terms of uh, animation. So if you see the last and paused and um, angles per second, those kinds of things, uh, those deal with the animation uh, episode. So we've just brought that in here. So if we just tab over to our program real quick, you can see we have this nice little animation uh, rotating cube. And that is something that if you don't know what's going on, go check out that episode and it's explained pretty thoroughly. Um, we move stride out into a constant up here and then we have our vertices uh, per the solid cube sides uh, so that you can see each of these are solid sides. Um, and you can see that episode as well to see how that works. Uh, we've added this faces array here, uh, view in our eights, and we're going to have uh, one uh, element per uh, vertex. So the first one is going to be all ones, all twos for the second side, all threes for the third side, and so forth until we hit all six sides of the cube. Scrolling on down here, you can see that we're going to initialize the state of the you picked face side um, to negative one. So initially, when we load up the program here, we don't have any sides selected. Let me go ahead and pause that animation. And as you can see here, this is the example of using the uh, animation uh, episode um, code that we had before. Same with this down here. And finally, in the draw, we've moved this uh, model matrix out of the uh, view matrix. And we're going to create a new one every single time we draw. The reason for that is when we do this rotation here, uh, if we just left this as the previous state, it's going to end up multiplying every single time by itself, unless we create at least one new matrix. And so we could just create a new model matrix here, or we can create a new one in one of these and restore that. So it's just easier to keep that here. Um, so otherwise, we're going to end up with a constantly accelerating cube, which is not what we want. And as we scroll down here, I've added this section here that creates and binds the buffer and the attribute for the attribute of a face. The reason it was added, I didn't want to take the time to rent, uh, refactor render buffers um, to take different types of attributes. So in this example, we have an unsigned byte here when normally we're using floats. And it's going down. Again, this code deals with the animation. Same with this. You can check that out in the animation episode for pausing. And then finally, here in the mouse down, between this and the vertex shader, which I'll show you in just a moment, that's where actually all the everything happens. So when we click down, we're going to initialize it and say 0. And what this is going to be do is allow us to set the V color based on the A face. So let me go ahead and we're going to jump back and forth between the vertex shader and the JavaScript just so you can see what's going on. So we have this new A face coming in as well as the you picked face. Um, we have to accept a float here as ints are not allowed by WebGL. And what we're going to do is we're going to cast this float into an int. And we know that we can do that easily because we're already passing in all of those uh, single digit uh, faces from above here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So those will cast very easily into an integer. Then we're going to go ahead and say if the number for that is uh, the same as the uh, one that we've picked from the attribute side, go ahead and set the color uh, to all ones. Otherwise, give it the attribute color itself. So all ones is going to be white, obviously. And then if the you pick face zero, we're going to go ahead and just set the vertex color to this, which is the all white. And um, we're going to go ahead and say what face side this is divided by 255. And those are the each of the given um, sides over there with uh, one, two, three, four, and five, and six, which translated in these are, of course, 255 and so forth. 
So when we ultimately get them, if it's the picked side, you'll end up with the number in the alpha position for which face it is. So it's kind of a, a interesting little way to store the value of the face in the alpha and still be able to display everything accordingly. Um, otherwise, we're just going to display the color out itself, which is going to be the RGB, and as well as combined with the alpha value itself. So scrolling back down here, we're going to go ahead and say we're going to uh, change this to zero so we know that we're going to be using this version right here. And then um, we're going to go ahead and draw it out, determine which pixel the number it is. If we, we know that this is the pixel value and we want the alpha, the alpha is the third indice, and we're going to redraw it. So um, that's basically all there is to this episode. It's very similar to the last one in the fact that we're having this uh, other way to store the information which is being sent in. Um, I kind of like the other way better than this way, but it's really up to you on how you want to do it and where you want to store that information, what's easiest for you uh, to keep track of. So if you like this episode, go ahead and sh uh, give it a like, uh, share it on social media if you will, uh, subscribe, that will help me out a lot, and go to programtil.com and sign up for my newsletter, as well as follow me on Twitter. Uh, have a great one, and thanks.